Burroughs Automatic Promotion Hopes took the biggest blow yet and possibly the decisive blow in their hopes for automatic promotion as they lost 4-2 away to relegation threatened Huddersfield Town. It's the Uruguayan curl to on in. Oh, Middlesbrough take the lead! What is up guys, Matthew here, welcome back to another episode of Project Borough, back after the international break. Apologies, there's been no content in them two weeks, I did have a video planned with my predictions of what would happen towards the end of this season, um, but work, my new job has just been so busy, I've been travelling and have just, yeah, been busy settling into that and I've had no real time to put towards the video and before I knew it the international break was almost over and the, well there was no point in putting out a prediction video so I thought we'd wait and see what happened this weekend and what happened is uh, well from a Borough fans perspective was possibly the end of our hopes of automatic promotion we went to Huddersfield Town a side who relegation threatened very blunt going forward uh, I'd had an upturn in results recently, but you'd like to think with Borough's form we'd have gone there, got the job done. I always thought it would be a tough game going up against our former manager Neil Warnock, of course, and I always thought it would be a grind, but never did I think that despite leading going into half-time, we would have possibly the worst 20 minutes under Michael Carrick. 20 minutes of utter madness and end up losing the game 4-2, and that as well as results going against us has, I think, for all purposes, ended our hopes of automatic promotion. It's going to be very, very difficult, if not impossible, now to turn, to, to turn that over with the games we've got remaining. Now, the first half was not bad. I think Borough did what we were kind of expecting them to do in the first half. It, it followed the pattern that I think we were all expecting. Huddersfield had a real good burst at the start of both halves, to be fair. And once Borough had weathered that start... The game settled very much into um, a attack versus defence kind of lineup, and Borough were just constantly in the Huddersfield half. Huddersfield were sat back; they weren't really pressing. Once Borough were in their in their final third, and they were just sitting in and asking Borough to break them down. And at that point, I thought the first goal is key here because if we don't get the first goal, it'll be very hard to get back into this game because they'll just defend their lead. But if we got the first goal, I would have put my mortgage on us just. Yeah, either managing the game or going on to just obliterate Huddersfield because of how how well we've been going recently, goal scoring and how poor they are from their well from from attacking from their point of view. I think they'd only scored 32 goals or 31 goals. It was that um, going into this game, which was far less than a goal a game, and we're just all round very blunt going forward. And they were blunt in the first half, barring a shot off the line in the first few minutes. They'd done nothing. They hadn't laid a glove on us in the first half. And once Marcus Force got us in front, which was a great goal. Good play down the left-hand side. Ramsey playing a great ball through to Cameron Archie, who cut back, stayed patient and composed. Squared it to Force, who placed it well into the back of the net. I thought that it was our game to lose. And at that point, it was 0-0 in the Sheffield United game. The gap was down to one. And I believed, I believed we were going to eventually win this game and close the gap even further. And then the second half happened, and I honestly cannot explain what happened in the second half. I, I cannot find the words to explain what happened. It's just Jekyll and Hyde, Borough, championship football at its absolute most unpredictable, and a side who had scored barely any goals this season suddenly got four in 20 minutes, and... The first come within 20 seconds of the kickoff. I, I don't know what happened. I don't know if the mentality coming out, Borough just were cruising, thought, yeah, we're going to win this game. It's all done and dusted. Huddersfield had had a rocket up their ass by Neil Warnock, but whatever happened, straight from kickoff, a couple of you know long balls, headed knocks on. Joe Ruffles got ahead of, it might have been Paddy McNair or it might have been one of the midfielders. He managed to dodge four missed tackles in the process of him getting into the box. It really was just Sunday league defending from Borough and he placed it past Zach Steffen. Um, and even then I thought, right, we've been caught out. They've got a chance, they've took it. Let's regain 
composure, control, like we did in the first half and eventually grind them down and break through again, but it just did happen. And the next 15 minutes was unlike anything I've seen from Borough under Michael Carrick. It was, it was astounding how we just completely fell apart in the next 15 minutes. Josh Caroma put them two up. We lost the ball again on the left-hand side. I think it might have been Daryl Lenahan. They played a big switch across, three on three it was, and fair play to Caroma. Cuts it on to his right and bends it beautifully into the far corner. And you're suddenly thinking, right, this is going to be tough to get back into this game now. And we now are going to have to you know, try and, and find a way through. They're going to sit back and hold on to their lead. But they didn't. Again, they got a set piece. Corner comes in, we miss the first one, we miss the second one, and he sort of knees it or shins it in the corner. Defending was appalling, and out of the blue, we weren't even going barely 10 minutes, and we were 3-1 down, and the game had gone. Um, and you think maybe, just because of Borough's unbelievable goal-scoring ability, we could maybe try and snatch a point off it if we could absolutely just... Yeah, go crazy on them in the final 20 minutes. But then, less than nine minutes later, they got a fourth. And again, down the left-hand side, no real challenge from the Borough defence. A deflected shot falls to Pearson, who is in all the space in the world. Takes a scruffy shot. It hits Stefan, who sort of saves it. But it still just about sneaks inside the right-hand post. And yeah, Akpom got a... A consolation late on and there was maybe still a chance with Borough's goal scoring threat that we could have gotten a few back but 4-3 was my biggest hope at that point. I thought typical we'll probably get a third and, and it would finish 4-3 but it didn't. Um, Akpom got his head on the end of a Rally McGree cross that was nothing but a consolation and it ended 4-2 and looking at the game this kind of sums it up looking at the momentum here on Footmob. The momentum was with Borough throughout the entire game. You know, you can see the sort of flurries that Huddersfield had at the start of each respective half. But we got the goal at the end of the first half. Big time to score. Even giving away the, sec the equaliser as early as we did in the second half, I thought we'd still be on top. And we were for the most part. But this mad 15 minutes was unlike anything I've ever experienced. And uh, a lot of fans thought, you know, Neil Warnock has Warnocked us here. Um... And we've been Neil Warnocked by our former manager. And as much as I would like to agree with that, I feel like we beat ourselves today with our defending, giving the ball away, too slacking midfield. I don't know if our mindset coming out in the second half was right. I don't know if we thought we'd just won the game. But you look at the stats and they are quite shocking. Huddersfield's expected goals, to be fair, is 1.8, which... Considering they scored four goals from it, it's quite shocking from a Borough point of view. But we do give up chances, and they did have quite a few good chances at times. But our expected goals was miles better, and we've, we've hit our expected goals. So you can only look at the, the extra three goals Huddersfield got compared to their XG and think that it was Borough who completely shot themselves in the foot. We had more shots than them. We had more big chances uh, than they did. And you look at our accurate passes... 399 passes to their 82. I mean, it's it's astonishing. Even our pass accuracy is leagues above theirs. But it just goes to show, doesn't it, that that doesn't matter. Possession, 74% doesn't matter. When it got to our defensive third, we were just so bad at the back. Um, we gifted them the win today. It was it was Borough. We Borough weren't beat by Huddersfield today. Borough were beaten by Borough, in my opinion. That has had a damning effect, given results elsewhere. Now Sheffield United went to Norwich and won one nil in what wasn't a great game. I don't think Sheffield United had to be at their absolute best there, but Norwich weren't great either. Um, so they nicked another away win, like they did against Sunderland, like they did against Reading. They're just edging out these away wins when they perhaps weren't playing at their best. They're getting the job done and that's all Sheffield United have to do is get the job done. They're not playing at their sparkling best. They're not the team they were at the start of the season, but they're just doing enough, which is why I think they'll get over the line. And elsewhere to Luton won the, I don't know what their derby's called, but they beat Watford in the early kickoff to close the gap to the point to which we are now only ahead of them via goal 
difference, which could prove pivotal come the end of the season. But elsewhere, results went far as barring Sheffield United and Luton. Millwall drew to West Brom. Blackburn lost to Birmingham, which is a poor result for them. Of course, Norwich lost to Sheffield United and Coventry were beaten 4-0 by Stoke. West Brom also drew 0-0, like I say, with Millwall. So Preston were the next best team to win, looking down the table. So despite um, this really, really awful result for Borough and what felt like the biggest body blow, the gap to the playoffs, uh, or the gap to seventh, is still 10 points. And albeit the gap now to Sheffield United is six, they have a game in hand. I understand Borough fans saying that it's not over till it's over and they're right in saying that and of course the gap was much bigger than this when we beat Sheffield United um, and it can quite easily flip again in a matter of days and of course we've got the Easter weekend coming up where we've got two games in the space of four days but Borough's two games are not the easiest. The first one on Good Friday being against Burnley who are of course one of the greatest teams I think we can safely say we've ever seen at this level and then an away trip to Bristol City which has never been our best hunting ground um, and we certainly have to play better than we did today if we want to get a result there. So yeah, two very tough games coming up for Borough post the, well, over the Easter weekend and it's the same for Sheffield United really. They've got Burnley as well albeit away from home, where you know Burnley are imperious at Turf Moor. So the only chance we've got is that Sheffield United somehow don't pick up anything and get beat by Burnley and somehow don't beat Wigan, but Wigan are rooted to the bottom of the league and are all but relegated, you'd feel. So I think it's over. My personal opinion is it's over. I think the only hope we've got is that Sheffield United somehow don't beat Wigan and get beat by Burnley. We can somehow beat Burnley and then beat Bristol City. But even then, they've got that game in hand. I still feel like they've just got the experience. And I think this this was the pivotal weekend for me. Coming back from the break, we had to pick up that baton again, kick on and have another sort of um, attack, another wave of attack at Sheffield United. And we've sort of completely stumbled, um, you have to say. Um, and we can't forget about Luton who are now level with us. Now, if people are, are saying that Luton are in with a chance of catching Sheffield United, given the momentum Luton have, then you've got to still say Borough are in with a shout. But I honestly just believe Sheffield United have enough. They've got a game in hand. We've only got seven games to go to close a six-point gap. I cannot see it happening personally. And I think we need to put our focus in, you know, consolidating a top three spot for me. Now, given where we were in October... After Carrick took over, we were in the bottom three. So to even be in the conversation to be, you know, a potential automatic promotion contender is unbelievable and is something we still have to commend this Borough side for. And they've been getting pelters after this game. And, you know, rightfully so, the defending wasn't great. But what this Borough side has achieved in still a short period of time under Michael Carrick is nothing short of remarkable. And to be in the conversation for the top two, I think, is, is unbelievable from where we were. So I'm not downbeat, I'm not distraught, I'm not disappointed that the top two seemingly is over. What is disappointing is it's kind of burst the bubble on the final six, seven games because I feel like Borough still had that tiny bit of hope and we still had an unbelievable you know, amount of excitement heading into the six final games that we could somehow make it interesting and somehow take it to the final day. And I feel like that bubble has just burst a bit after this result and it suddenly feels like all that momentum and excitement building up over the international break that this running was going to be a real head-on collision between Borough and Sheffield United has kind of gone now. Um, we still could catch them. Let's you know, let's not be you know beat around the bush. Their game in hand is not until I think the very very end of the season. So Borough could still get within one, two, three points. Could even level with them. But that game in hand they've got right at the very end could just pull them ahead at a vital time. So I think it's done now. It has sort of burst the bubble on the run in, but we just have to ensure we get top three um, because I still feel like top three, top four is still very much in our grasp. I mean, we're talking about a six-point gap to Sheffield United. There's also a six-point gap back to Millwall and Blackburn. So I feel like Borough and Luton should be happily con you know, consolidating P3 and 4. I think it's a case of which team finishes third and which finishes fourth. And in that respect, 
either way, we've got an advantage going into the playoffs because we'll have the second leg at home. And for me personally, I'd much rather play Millwall or Blackburn in the playoffs than Luton. I feel like going to Kenilworth Road in the first leg would be awful. Um, and don't get me wrong, going to the Den and going to Ewood Park would be awful too, but we could turn it over, I think, in the second leg at the Riverside. And I would much prefer Millwall or Blackburn in the semi-finals and Luton in the final if they get there at Wembley. I think that would be a much better even playing field for Borough rather than going there in a playoff semi-final to Luton. So it's... It's still looking positive heading into the playoffs. That still remains the goal. It still was the goal at the start of the season. It's good that we've made it interesting, but I think it's over now, personally. Um, and it's just about finishing third or finishing fourth. Um, and I hope it stays as it is. I hope Millwall and Blackburn remain in the top six, as I still would be a little bit shaky if it was Norwich, West Brom. I think Watford are out of it now, but we'll see how things go. Plenty more twists and turns. Borough, of course, do have Burnley coming up after uh, after this on Good Friday. And do not get me wrong, it would be typical of Borough to beat Burnley. It really, really would. And it wouldn't put me past them doing so. But in all honesty, Burnley could go up, I believe, on Friday. And it will definitely be more than enough motivation, I think, for them to get the job done. I think a point would be a good point for us at home to Burnley because I feel like Burnley will beat Sheffield United. So anything we can gain from this game will be massive. Um, a win would be out of this world. But with Burnley this season, I can't see it. But we'll see. Anything can happen under the lights at the Riverside. Borough hopefully can get back on track, as we often have done under Michael Carrick, and get something from Burnley. But for me, playoffs is the goal now. Anything else is a bonus, as my expectations for automatics is pretty much on the floor now, I'll be brutally honest, after today's game. But do let me know what you think, guys, in the comment section below, whether you're a Borough fan, whether you're not, whether you're a Sheffield United fan, a Luton fan, whatever it may be, how do you think it's all going to play out? Do you think there's still a chance of Borough making the playoffs? Uh, sorry, making... Do you still think there's a chance of Borough making the automatic promotion places? Do you think it's just playoffs now? And if so, who do you think will make the playoffs and win them? Do let me know that in the comment section below, guys. Like this video if you've enjoyed it, of course. As always, subscribe for much more content here on the channel and hit the bell so you never miss an upload. I will be bringing the gaming content back to the channel. And like I say, I've had a mad few weeks settling into my new job, but I've got a few days off next week to focus on the FIFA and the brand new career mode for PGA. Of course, the EA PGA game, which is coming out on Tuesday, which I have early access for. So a career mode will be starting on that too. So look forward to the gaming content returning next week, guys. Hopefully things turn around for the Borough. Do leave me a comment section below. But until next time, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you all next time.